All right. So, like we discussed in the previous session, uh, we want we were actually using a database a data page to fetch the record from the um, fetch the record from the database table and display it here. Sorry, C1. What is the customer ID? Let me check what were the customer IDs. Data type. Hmm, C1, this should be okay. So, why are we not fetching that? Did I modify the section? Just a second, let me check. Oh, okay. This is always visible on the change of customer ID post value refresh this section and populate customer data oh sorry I have put exit <laughs> my bad all right now it will work Now, I mean, we are showing that record from the customer table, but the user might want to uh, update that record, right? If the user update the records, then we should be able to save that record back in the database as well as an update, right? And for that, we have another type of data page called saveable. Saveable data pages. Remember, uh, currently how we are doing it, we are actually getting the data from the database, data page, okay? We are getting that using the data page and then we are copying it over to a property. And that's the property that we are displaying um, basically the data from here. So when I'm updating anything here on this screen, that is going to be updated in the property. So if I'm going to save it back, of course, I can save the property directly using OBJ method in the activity. Those are the stuff that we will learn later. But here we want to demo the saveable data page. So that means that we will have to copy that data from the property to a saveable data page and then save the data page. So let's learn how to do that. Okay, how we update from the prop on the property, copy it over to the saveable data page and then save it. We have another option. We can directly use saveable data page to fetch the record, show it uh, from the data page, and then uh, take the edit on the data page directly and save it back to as well. So we will learn both methods. Okay. First, the property one. So currently, it is uh, configured on the property. We are modifying this. This is, let's say, my is Okay. I'm doing this. See, and if you look at the clipboard, it is updated on the property. customer see that's where the property is updated now i'll have to take this up into a database and save it back okay so first let's learn how to configure the saveable well database <clears throat> we created a read only database earlier under the customer get customer record this is the read only database that we configured okay it's actually using the lookup to fetch the record from the database and then it is uh, basically showing uh, we are using it there on the screen okay after copying it over from the database to property now let's create a new data page okay so i can create from the data type tab as well a new data page so i'll add a data page and i'll name it update customer 
details. This is again one customer detail. This is the class, of course. It is going to be savable this time and thread label. Okay. You still need to configure a source for it. All right. You need to configure a source. Now, if I config, I can configure the lookup. I will have basically on the case, I will have the customer ID anyway. I can configure the lookup. So it will read the data from the database and then I can put the update from the property onto this page and then save it. So I'm going to say lookup only for the lookup of the class customer. Sorry. It needs to have that CID parameter. So I will add the parameter here. It has to be passed. It is required. And I will pass the same parameter. So if you have the same parameter name on the data page and that is what is needed on the class, you can just click on the pass current parameter page. It will automatically map that CID to CID. Save it. So this is to get. How does it save? There is a save configuration, database save. It will automatically take the data from this data page and do a database save. Pega will manage that. You don't have to do anything. You will only need to ensure that all the data is available on this data page, especially the ID. CID will be updated, uh, updated uh, sorry, available because we are doing the lookup. We are getting the entire data. All right. So I can use this saveable data page to display the record here as well, but that's the last demo, second demo in this uh, basically session. First demo is that, okay, let's continue with the current configuration. We have the data on the property. Let the modification happen on the property. Then copy the data from the property on the data page, save data page, and then save it. So how do I copy that? You know that we have a data transform populate that we are calling on an action. This section is displayed using a flow action. You also know that. In the flow action, if I open the flow action that we are leveraging there, in the process category flow action submit loan application my update should go into the database only after i submit this right not before that you submit this that means you are completing the flow action i'd explained you guys that there are two type of processing available on the flow action one is called pre-processing that will run before the page is loaded before you get on this screen and then there is post processing that happens after that happens actually after you submit the form so i need this done after i submit the form after i submit the form i need to copy the data from the property on the saveable data page and then save it back to the table so i'm going to write a data transform post submit pt data transform create it and I'm going to update update page this new data page savable data page needs parameter CID and the CID is in the cust on the clipboard it is CID is available on this property. This property is actually see customer ID property. So I'll read it dot cust ID and then I'll update the value from that customer page. I can map one by one CID. CID is not needed. I mean this is auto populated, but I can map map all the properties one by one. But if the class of source and target is same, you can directly set page to page as well. It will auto map. That's another way. Because the customer data, this uh, update customer detail, this has the same class as customer and the property that we have here that is stored, that has the data, updated data, is also of the same class. See? So I can do direct one-to-one -one mapping with set. That's also permitted. So it will automatically update everything from the customer to customer detail. Save it. Let's save the flow action as well. 
right now the data updated data will be available in the in the saveable data page but saveable data page doesn't save itself you will have to issue a command to save let me open the case type so this is my flow open the process this is where the flow action is getting executed so i have two three options to issue a save data page okay one is that i can issue it on the flow action as well in the post processing i can call save data page but i cannot call it right now because after the save data page my data transform will execute so when i will try to save the data the data will not be updated so i cannot use flow action the other option is to add a save data page save there is a save data page save see and after the flow action is executed then i will call this flow this particular save and then flow and here i will configure which data page to save so d underscore update what was the name update customer yeah customer detail it will ask the id cid is again on the cust id which data page to save submit it and i can rename this flow sorry this save save customer report save it now let's try let's test this out so false c1 i'm going to update mahesh chandr right at the moment if you look at the clipboard okay so all the editable and saveable data pages come on the clipboard under the user pages you will not see d underscore update data page here because we haven't referenced that that is referenced only when we submit let's submit this good when you submitted it see the update customer data page is also created and it has the updated name and that that save would have updated it in the database table okay it's not updated it here yet because it's a transactional commit it takes some time see mahesh chandra mishra that got updated so this is how we update the database that's one configuration okay now here we are doing some unnecessary step if we are not going to store the data in the database in the case itself see at the moment the property is on the case so we have the data in the case as well but if we didn't need the data on the case i could have fetched it directly on the saveable data page display it and whenever user is updating we can take that update directly on the saveable data page and then save it back let's try that configuration as well so here on the section this second section we configured at the moment its visibility is set to never we were using the read only data page to get the data and display it directly without using the property i'm going to do the same thing here as well i'm going to comment the first category that is lead, uh, that is showing from the customer i'm going to comment uh, i'm going to basically make visibility no I will not display it and I'm going to display the other one which is directly fetching from the database data page so I'm going to set the visibility always and I'm not going to use the read only data page this time I'm going to use the up um, the saveable data page so whatever we will see on the screen this section will take the input from the saveable data page itself so it will show whatever we will see on the screen that will be from the saveable data page when it is from the saveable data page then whatever modification you will do that will directly go into the saveable data page 
if it is available in the saveable database then when you are submitting this form the first form that means your data your, your data page is already updated so i can issue the save data page i do not need this flow action sorry this say save now i can use flow action to save it because the data is already updated on the data page i can on the post i can directly issue save data page so i will save it and i'll open this submit application flow action in the section itself the data is updated so in the post processing i will simply add the data page to be saved so see i do not have to run the data transform to copy and all those stuff that is not needed i'll remove that data transform as well that we are calling to set that post submit now let's test this one false c2 i'm going to fetch see this time this one is using from the saveable data page this is not on the property this is from the saveable data page if i add anything here this is directly reflecting in the saveable data page the d underscore update this one see neeraj kumar right and if i submit this the data is available the flow action is automatically going to issue the save data page command okay and the data will be reflected back in the table let's look into the table not updated yet uh, it takes a little time because we are not um, basically functionally committing it the commit will be done by pegasi mas neeraj kumar okay so that's another way of using saveable database directly without having to interact with the property to copy the data from the database to property and then property to database we can avoid that as well so this demo basically con uh, concludes here and it talks about uh, how we can use saveable database to update the data in the table from the case processing